We have always assumed that the trajectory of space exploration was linear, that we would go from the moon to Mars and then to the stars, climbing the Kardashev scale from a type zero civilization to a type one, eventually mastering planetary energy. We believed our destiny was written in the stars, waiting for us to claim it. But there is a variable we failed to account for in our equations of cosmic evolution. We assumed the universe was empty, or at the very least indifferent to our presence. We never calculated for the possibility that the universe has an immune system and that to a sufficiently advanced observer, we might look less like explorers and more like a virus attempting to leave its host. The entity we have designated as 3i Atlas has changed everything. This is not merely another rock tumbling through the gravity well of our solar system. It is not a cometary fragment or a stray asteroid like Oumuamua. The data we have received and the subsequent reaction by the world's leading space agencies suggests that 3i Atlas is a mechanism, a boundary marker, or perhaps a lock. And yesterday, we turned the key the wrong way. You may have noticed a sudden, unexplained shift in the news cycle regarding our deep space ambitions. Missions that have been in planning for decades, probes designed to hunt for life on Europa or map the outer edges of the Kuiper Belt are suddenly being paused, delayed, or placed into indefinite hibernation. The official narrative is budget constraints or technical anomalies. But as a physicist, I look at the data and I see a very different story. NASA has not run out of money. NASA has been frightened into silence. The discovery began not with a visual sighting, but with a gravitational anomaly that defied the standard model of physics. When 3i Atlas entered our system, it did not follow a ballistic trajectory. Celestial mechanics demands that an object falling toward a star must accelerate as it approaches the perihelion, governed by Kepler's laws of planetary motion. But 3i Atlas did not accelerate. It decelerated. It adjusted. It moved with the precision of a vessel that is aware of its surroundings. This alone should have triggered a global announcement. A self-navigating object entering our solar system is the holy grail of space discovery, the definitive proof of extraterrestrial intelligence. But the silence from the scientific community was deafening. Why? Because along with that trajectory correction came a signal. It was not a radio wave. It was not a laser pulse. It was a modulation of background radiation so sophisticated, so mathematically complex that it took our most advanced advanced AI quantum supercomputers weeks to even recognize it as data. When we finally decoded the structure of this cosmic signal, the blood ran cold in the veins of every astrophysicist who saw the raw feed. It wasn't a greeting. It wasn't a sequence of prime numbers intended to show intelligence. It was a chaotic, high-frequency burst of data that interacted directly with the sensors of our deep space probes. Voyager 1, Voyager 2, New Horizons, Horizons, our furthest ambassadors, simultaneously experienced a total telemetry washout the moment 3i Atlas became active. It was as if a hand had reached out from the dark and covered their eyes. This was the moment I realized we were no longer dealing with a passive observer. We are dealing with a galactic quarantine. I have spent my life studying the theoretical physics of the impossible. I have written about hyperspace, string theory, and the potential for multiverse travel. I have always championed the idea that we must leave Earth to survive, but we must now ask ourselves a terrifying question. What if we are not allowed to leave? The behavior of 3i Atlas suggests it is a sentinel. In the vast dark forest of the cosmos, civilizations that make too much noise get noticed. We have been broadcasting our location for a century. We have sent maps of our DNA, coordinates of our home planet, and diagrams of our biology into the abyss. We assumed this was an act of hope, but 3i Atlas may be the response to that arrogance. It is possible that we have triggered an automated defense system, a mechanism left behind by a type 2 or type three galactic civilization designed to contain emerging species until they are deemed safe or until they are sterilized. The decision to suspend all deep space missions is not a retreat. It is an act of desperate camouflage. We are trying to go dark. We are trying to show the universe that we are not a threat, that we are staying in our cradle. But I fear it may be too late. The data packet from 3i Atlas contained specific modulations that correspond to planetary magnetospheres. It was analyzing our shield. It was testing the strength of the bubble that protects our biology from solar radiation. When a scientist looks at an ant 
colony, they do not hate the ants, they study them, they might even protect them. But if the ants begin to build a bridge toward the scientist's home, the dynamic changes instantly. The scientist destroys the bridge. 3i Atlas is that destruction. It is the realization that we are not the masters of our domain, but merely tenants who have violated the terms of our lease. This brings me to the concept of consciousness and the nature of reality itself. We often wonder why we haven't seen signs of a galactic civilization. This is the Fermi paradox. Where is everybody? There are billions of stars, billions of potential Earth-like planets. The galaxy should be teeming with life. I have often theorized that perhaps civilizations destroy themselves before they can reach the stars, the result of nuclear war or ecological collapse. But 3i Atlas presents a darker solution to the paradox. Maybe the galaxy is empty because something cleans it. Maybe 3i Atlas is the reason we are alone. It is the great filter made manifest. It is a cosmic gardener pruning the branches of life that grow too wild or too fast. And right now humanity is growing too fast. Our technological evolution has outpaced our wisdom. We have created nuclear weapons, artificial intelligence, and biological agents, all while remaining a fractured, primitive type zero civilization. To a higher intelligence, we must look like a toddler waving a loaded gun. The suspension of our space program is an admission of guilt. We are hiding the gun. We are trying to look harmless. But the most unsettling aspect of this space anomaly is not its technology, but its timing. 3i Atlas arrived precisely at the moment when humanity began to seriously contemplate permanent off-world colonization. We are on the verge of returning to the moon with the Artemis program. We are building starships in Texas designed to take us to Mars. We are preparing to become a multi-planetary species. And at that exact threshold, the gatekeeper appears. This implies a level of universal awareness that is difficult for the human mind to comprehend. It implies that we are being watched, not just by a localized probe, but by a network of surveillance that spans the galaxy. They knew we were ready to leave before we even left. This suggests that the speed of light is not the limit of information transfer for them, or that they have been here, dormant, buried in the Lagrange points or the dark side of the moon, waiting for a specific technological trigger. I recently reviewed the spectral analysis of the object's surface. It absorbs 99.9% .9 of all light that hits it. It is darker than coal, darker than the blackest paint we can manufacture. In physics, a perfect black body is a theoretical object. But 3i Atlas is real. It is a void in the sky. When we point our telescopes at it, we see nothing but the absence of stars. It is a hole in reality. This absorption suggests it is harvesting energy, or perhaps it is masking its true internal composition. But my colleagues in the theoretical physics community have whispered a different theory to me, one that keeps me away wake at night. They suggest that 3i Atlas is not a ship but a projector. If you accept the simulation hypothesis, the idea that our reality is a constructed simulation, much like a video game, then 3i Atlas acts like a debugger. It appears when the simulation creates an error or an anomaly. Humanity's attempt to leave the solar system might be that error. We might be reaching the edge of the map and the system is pushing us back. The message sent to NASA, the one that forced the shutdown, contained a sequence of data that looked suspiciously like a countdown. It was not based on our time, seconds, minutes, or hours, but on the decay rate of specific isotopes. It was a timeline, and the timeline is short. The scientists shocked by this revelation are not speaking publicly because they do not want to cause mass panic. How do you tell the world that the sky is no longer open to us? How do you explain that the final frontier is actually a prison wall? Wall. We are seeing the collision of human ambition with cosmic reality. We have always defined ourselves by our ability to explore, to push boundaries. If that is taken away from us, what do we become? If we are forced to remain on Earth, trapped with our own dwindling resources and our own violent tendencies, the future looks very different. We become a pressure cooker with the lid welded shut. The final warning aspect of the 3i Atlas transmission was interpreted by linguistics algorithms and advanced AI patterns pattern recognition software. The sentiment extracted was not hostility but indifference. It was a command. Cease. Remain. Wait. Wait for what? That is the question that haunts me. Are we waiting for judgment? Are we waiting to be harvested? Or are we waiting until we mature enough to join the galactic conversation? There is a concept in string theory where dimensions are curled up, hidden from our view. 
We live in three dimensions of space and one of time, but there could be ten or eleven dimensions all around us. Three Eye Atlas seems to manipulate these higher dimensions. It phases in and out of our sensors. It is here, and then it is everywhere. It defies the causal structure of space-time. This is why the discovery is so apocalyptic. It proves that our understanding of physics is kindergarten level compared to what is possible. We are trying to build rockets with chemical fire while they are manipulating the fabric of the cosmos. It is like a caveman trying to fight a stealth bomber with a stick. The suspension of deep space missions is likely indefinite. NASA, the ESA, and other agencies are pivoting their focus inward. You will see a sudden increase in Earth observation satellites and planetary defense initiatives. They will tell you it is to monitor climate change or track asteroids. And while those are valid goals, the primary purpose is now surveillance of the perimeter. We are building a watchtower because we know something is out there in the dark. I think back to the golden record on the Voyager probe, carrying the sounds of Earth, wind, thunder, birds, whales, and greetings in 55 languages. We sent it out with such innocence. We wanted to say, here here we are. Now, I fear we are regretting that invitation. 3i Atlas has shown us that the universe is not a lonely place, but it is a crowded one, and the neighbors are not friendly. They are bureaucratic, ancient, and immensely powerful. As we look at the night sky tonight, we must realize that the stars are not just balls of burning gas. They are the homes of things that have been watching us evolve from the oceans to the savannas to the skyscrapers. And now that we are trying to leave the gravity of our home world, they have stepped in to stop us. The implications for our future are profound. If we cannot expand, we must stabilize. We must solve our problems here. Perhaps this is the test. Perhaps 3i Atlas is forcing us to fix Earth before we are allowed to ruin Mars. In a way, it is a mirror. It is forcing us to look at ourselves. But there is a lingering signal in the noise, a sub-frequency that the AI detected just before the shutdown. It translates roughly to a concept of harvest or collection. This is the part that chills me to the bone. Are we the experiment? And is the experiment concluding? The silence from NASA is the silence of a man holding his breath while a predator walks past his hiding spot. We are all holding our breath now. The missions are grounded. The rockets are cold. The screens are dark. We are waiting to see if 3i Atlas moves on or if it opens. If it opens, we will finally know the answer to the greatest question of all time. Are we alone? No. Are we safe? I don't think so. I want you to look up tonight. Really look at the darkness between the stars. It is no longer empty space. It is a territory that we have been forbidden to enter. The quarantine has begun. The future of humanity is now hanging in the balance, suspended between our desire to reach out and the terrifying command to stay put. We are living through the most critical moment in the history of our species, and most of the world is sleeping through it. What do you believe is the true purpose of 3i Atlas? Is it a protector, saving us from ourselves, or is it the warden of a galactic prison? And if we are in a prison, what happens when the prisoners start to riot? I will be monitoring the atmospheric data and the leaked telemetry from the few remaining active satellites. We will continue to decode the universe's final warnings, no matter how terrifying they become. Follow this channel and stay with me as we peel back the layers of this cosmic mystery together. We must remain vigilant, for we are no longer just observers of the universe. We are now the observed.